bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Okay, 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 let's set the vibe. Whoa, you come to play, you better recognize. Oh, walk in the building, tell them step aside. Go, you kill the game, this shit a genocide. Whoa, okay, 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 let's set the vibe. Whoa, you come to play, you better recognize. Oh, walk in the building, tell them step aside. Go, we kill the game, this shit a genocide. You look lost. And it looks like you have your office in a f***ing meat locker. We can't all be perfect. And the point of this sin is... Sorry, I was just running under the assumption that Discount Jeremy was going to explain why this failed attempt at a joke was a sin. But I guess he wasn't planning on it. I can bring you in warm... Or I can bring you in cold. This version of the I can bring you in dead or alive cliche lacks clarity and could be misinterpreted as I can bring you in with or without hot cocoa. Yet again, Discount Jeremy says what I can only imagine was meant as a joke, but fails to make it funny. So biting someone in a fight is a sin for sure, but is he biting Mando's thumb or the gun? Because it looks like he's biting the f***ing gun. Who would even do that? Even Mike Tyson wouldn't do- Well, okay, I guess maybe Mike Tyson would do that, but surely no one else would. So he tries to sin someone for biting Mando's gun while showing the guy biting his hand? That's stupid. Also, unfunny Mike Tyson joke is unfunny. I want to remove one sin for the sheer joy I experienced at the deployment of this night saber, but I also have to add a sin because Lucasfilm knows what I want, is giving it to me, and I feel dirty. Discount Jeremy has a dark saber boner. Not saying I blame him, but still. A non-Jedi with no training brings a saber to a gunfight, and it f***ing works. Right, because he has basic combat training, meaning that he's not completely useless with the saber, and the henchmen aren't exactly renowned warriors. I mean, they work in a meatpacking factory for fuck's sake. Show deprives me of seeing this structure in its entirety. I've got so many questions. Like, why does the ring have a gap? Is it still under construction? Is this part of the space zoned for multifamily residential? Let me answer all those questions with one simple answer. Nobody gives a shit. Part of me is loving this entire sequence, but the other part of me feels like I ordered a Book of Boba Fett sandwich. So far, all I'm getting is a slathering of the Mandalorian. So discount Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Being willing to sit calmly and feast when someone sets a decapitated head on the table. I don't care if that shit's in a bag, it still smells like a decapitated head. I don't want to be the overly literal asshole, but discount Jeremy is kind of forcing my hand. So here goes. These people paid Mando to kill a guy for them, so it makes sense that they wouldn't be squeamish about that guy's head. It's really unfortunate this leg injury didn't happen earlier in the year. Mandalorian insurance isn't great, but it's better than nothing. Insurance jokes. All this talk of the Empire and they lasted less than 30 years. Mandalorians have existed 10,000. In the first 12 minutes of this episode, it's felt like at least 15 years, so your point is what exactly? Discount Jeremy continues to have the attention span of a toddler. I am told it is the dark saber. This blade's position goes on for some time, just to give us a bunch of metrics by which we're supposed to determine whether Mando is or is not the one. Discount Jeremy sins exposition cliche. Whoever wields it can lead all of Mandalore. If it is won by creed in battle. I mean, I haven't seen Michael B. Jordan in this episode, but I guess he could be showing up later. Discount Jeremy makes a creed pop culture reference that isn't a sin of this episode cliche. Mandalore will be laid to waste and its people scattered to the four winds. Later the show goes on to describe events that make it sound like Mandalore has already been laid to waste, so it kind of seems like it doesn't matter who has this thing anymore. The Great Purge was an event that destroyed Mandalore and scattered its people. You're correct about that, but you could not be more incorrect about the Darksaber not being important. Whoever rightfully wields the saber can unite the remaining Mandalorians under their rule and restore them to power. It's extremely important. Those born of Mandalore strayed away from the path. This footage makes it look less like they strayed from the path and more like the path was obliterated by suborbital bombardment. You clearly haven't seen the Clone Wars. A majority of Mandalorians stopped living by their traditional militaristic values during Duchess Satine's rule, meaning that they did stray from the path before they were obliterated. Only those that walked the way escaped the curse prophesized in the Creed. Seriously, did Disney buy the Rocky franchise or something? Skip. What shall I forge for the foundling... Grogu. A better name? Okay, that was pretty funny. Take a sim back, damn it. She hammers the end of the spear a few times and then quenches it. And voila, we have tiny metal rings. Whoever thought that we wouldn't be more interested in this entire process has completely overlooked the success of Forged in Fire. Except I can guarantee that you would have sinned the episode for spending too much time on the forging process if they had done what you said. So the sin here is hypocrisy, I guess. 
the suggestion here is that this will be some sort of chain mail, but we aren't even allowed to see the finished product yet. And I don't like being frock teased. This sin is stupid. He's basically complaining that he doesn't get to see the chain mail yet. He sounds like a fucking child. It was forged by my ancestor, founder of House Vizla. Then why didn't you bring this up earlier? This future fight feels forced and filler-esque. Did you want him to bring this up immediately after Mando got back? Why? The guy clearly needed time to consider the risk of fighting Mando for the saber, which is why it took him time to go through with it. When you miss someone, you see them everywhere you look, cliche. That's not a cliche, my guy. Try again. Wally's cousin pops up on screen. Don't get me wrong, I always love meeting a new member of the family, but Disney, you're getting very close to creating a cute and lovable droid cliche. That also wouldn't be a cliche. You hit this button, you're gonna evacuate your exhaust manifold, if you know what I mean. Title of my sex tape? Nope, you're still not doing it right. Ever since they've been moving spice to the system, everything's gone to hell. I'm not concerned with the obvious comparisons to Dune. The problem here is that my imagination immediately puts the two franchises in the same universe, and I can't decide now if I do or don't want that to happen. A whole bunch of bullshit. You're reporting this? You want to go back to base and fill out reports all day? Even in a galaxy far, far away, excessive paperwork is the hurdle between doing and not doing your job. And why is that a sin? Paperwork sucks no matter where you are. Those J-type pulse engines really tighten the old evacuation port, don't they? Show takes a second shot at this excretion joke, and now I'm left wondering if there is a meaningful difference between the exhaust manifold and the evacuation port. You're really not one to criticize the continued use of a bad joke, dude. 